Yeah, I wanted to talk about non-self-respect stuff, like, um, you know, I've been growing in the faith, I've been growing, um, as I've been growing, you know, in my walk with the Lord, you know, I've been walking with the Lord for approximately six years, it's gonna be seven years on, um, October of 2023. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, um, it's just crazy, you know, that the church, you know, is just so divided, you know, and um, in reality, brothers, we're not supposed to be divided, you know, we're supposed to be united, not divided, because, um, the the my closest brother in Christ tells me that why there's so many division if everybody points it with scripture, you know, and the conclusion is that most people they make they read one scripture, and they take like a doctrine. Like, they don't study the Bible. They just say, oh, the Bible says this, the Bible says that. You can do this, you can do that. But you got to learn, brothers and sisters, to, um, to, um, here, let me tell you what's, like, the, the main issue, you know, who Jesus is and how do you get saved. Those are the things I will consider that, yeah, he needs to be talked about, needs to be dealt with. Like, a lot of you guys know I believe in the Trinity. I believe, you know, that a Christian can abandon their salvation, they could forfeit their salvation. They could let Christ go by walking back in their sin, by dwelling in their iniquity. Because that's what the Bible teaches. But I'm not here to talk about one saved, over saved, or one and or preach a relation rapture. I'm not here to talk about those things. But, you know, people debate over non salvific stuff like, should Christians keep the Sabbath? Um, I was, like, watching a video where, like, there was a... I don't know if it actually considered his brother or not. A bro I I I don't I don't know if it's supposed to consider this guy a brother. But this guy accuses people. He he acts like he's more holier. I'm not gonna mention his name. He acts like he's more holier than than other believers and you know, that's like our it's like self righteousness, you know, like um in my walk with the Lord I bump into a lot of Christians. I've been told that I'm I'm in sin because I, I, I go to a building that I'm supposed to be going to a, a, a house church. There's not a sin to go to a house church, and I don't think I'm sinning by meeting up with my brothers and sisters on Sundays. There's debates that you're supposed to be worshiping God on Saturday. And um, just to make clear, you know, you can meet up with the saints any day you want. You can meet up on Mondays. You can meet up on Tuesdays. You can meet up on Fridays, on Wednesdays, on Thursdays, you know. Uh, it's legalism in the church, you know, like, I love those people, you know, but I just can't agree with them, you know, like, I believe that legalism will hinder your walk. Like, I, I remember I was in a, I was in a, on, a, on a live chat and someone told a sister, again, I'm not going to mention names, Someone, I saw someone told a sister she, that she prays like a sinner or she prays like the world. And first of all, the Bible said that God doesn't hear prayers of sinners. Second of all, um, you just can be like too legalistic. You, you, how, how do you know the person's prayer life? Like, um, there are some churches that are going to make you pray on your knees. Like, you have to like do it on your knees. Otherwise, God does not hear your prayer. That's, I mean, there's nothing wrong. In praying positions, you know. In the future, I'm going to make more teachings about how to pray. Should you pray with your eyes closed? Should you pray with your eyes open? <laughs> it's just like people, a lot of believers, like, they like to fight with each other over stupid stuff. I mean, for me, I remember one time my brother was telling me that it's better to pray five minutes than not praying at all. Although I do have to admit that I have to learn how to increase my prayer life. I have to like be more devoted to my prayer life. And um Um People debate over non salvific issues like how do you get baptized? If um there's people who teach us that oh if you that if you got baptized inside a bathtub, it doesn't count. If you haven't been baptized by a pastor, it doesn't count. 
But, you know, we see, like, a lot of examples in the Bible that that's not the case. The disciples baptized people, and they weren't, they weren't pastors or elders of a local church. You know, but again, I'm talking about what I agree and disagree, you know. And it's okay, you know, I want you to know that if you believe that wearing that me as a Christian, I'm sinning by wearing shorts, please pull up a Bible verse. Stop, like, making a doctrine about it. Stop saying, oh, Brother Brian, you're going to go to hell. You, you're, wearing, you're preaching with shorts on. You're going to burn in hell, Brother Brian. You're, you're sinning. You're a wicked child of the devil. That's going, like, way too far. You know, that's why I oftentimes don't want to jump. I, I want to get off of social media because of people like that. Again, I love you, bro. And most of the time, I'm just going to let you talk. But if you're going to continue, like, pushing my buttons, like, harassing me, telling me that I need to meet up with my brothers and sisters on a Saturday and not on a Sunday because the Catholics did it. Listen, you know, um, I kind of know where one is people are coming from. They do believe that um, that the Trinity is... Uh, I didn't want to bring this up, but... Yes, I believe in the Trinity. I believe in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Three in one. I don't believe in three gods, but again, I'm going to make a doctor of the Trinity. I'm going to make a video of the Trinity in the near future. I don't know when. There's just a lot of stuff going on. You know... Uh, could life, the church... Yeah, like, church hopping. I used to be a little bit legalistic. I'm not going to lie to you guys. As I've been growing in my faith, um, I personally don't agree with church hopping. I believe, you know, you're supposed to be planted in the church where they teach you some doctrine. Not jumping from, oh, this Sunday I'm going to go to, um, I'm going to go to Holiness Pentecostal. And then the next Sunday I'm going to go to, um, South Lake Baptist Church. And then the following Sunday, I'm going to go to a Methodist church. You know, when it's run by homos, it's run by female bishops. If you go to a Methodist church, not all of them, it's a disaster. There's a lot of homosexual pastors. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of things that are the, that are need to be avoided. Like, you know, um, there's even, I learned that some churches even teach that the devil. Hear me out, brothers and sisters. There's a church. I don't know the name of it, and I don't want to know. They literally say with their own lips that Satan's going to go to heaven. I was like, wow. I wasn't that shocked, to be honest, because there's a lot of heresy in the last days anyways. She Christians. Uh, we need to congregate, bro. Uh, the Bible said, do not forsake the assembly with yourselves together. But what I'm trying to say is that the Christians fight each other. They fight each other for almost every single thing like and that's why I, I take a break from debating because I don't have time bro I don't have time to debate you know you only believe in one and that's fine you know you just move on go kick some rocks if you believe I'm a heretic because I, I believe in the trinity go kick rocks if you believe I'm a, I'm a heretic because I believe in conditional security that one must abide the divine that you must live a holy life that you must be baptized after you repent and believe Go kick rocks. Move on. Okay. You already know my statement of faith. A lot of you guys who know me, know me very well. In the future, I'm going to talk more about conditional security. You know, what's, what is the problems I have with people who believe in the Trinity and conditional security? Because I believe in those things. I believe in conditional security. And I believe in um the Trinity. But again, I'm not going to get more into that. I, don't, I want to talk about like other secondary stuff like... One of the stupidest things, you know, I've seen Christians debating about is how I get baptized. Like, um, when I got baptized in 2019, a lot of Christians were telling me that I need to do it again. I wasn't too familiar with doctrines. People were telling me that if my baptism is not in Jesus' name, only I'm not saved. In some churches, you know, they make you like, um, again, uh, prayer positions. It's like, and let me tell you, for my legalistic friends, what if a person lost their legs? According to you, you're going to, um, a Christian's going to go to hell for not praying in their knees. But what if the person's in wheelchair? What if the person's in wheelchair? Is the person going to go to hell? Are they going to go to hell because they're, they're praying on their, in their wheelchair? Like, they're right there, they're sitting down, they're doing this, and they're pulling out their heart. 
there's other doctors that teach that women can't wear pants. Or she's a Jezebel. Like, what? But I was like, bro, where, where are you getting all these ideas from? Where in the world are you getting the idea that if you pray, if you do this, you're praying like the world? Again, God does not hear prayers of sinners. Like, uh. Oh, yeah, you could leave the Lord, um, bro, but I'll tell you more later on DMs, um, bro. Someone asked me a question, someone who I know from high school. Yes, um, bro, uh, 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 you could walk away from God if you wake, if you walk away from God, if you go live in sin, you're going to go to hell. You know, if you live in sin, like if you get drunk, you get, you, 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 you commit fornication, like, a lot of Christians fight with me, bro, so... That's why I'm making the video because I, I I wanted to encourage you guys, um, don't run away from Jesus. You know, maybe you've been to a church where they tell you that if you wear pants as a woman, you're gonna go to hell. And let me give you my thoughts on it. If you're if you're a woman, if you're a woman of God, your pants should not be too tight or not too loose, just like regular. You know, I believe modesty is also important to talk about. Same with shorts, you know, um, um, with shorts, it's not a sin for a guy to wear shorts. That's like mumbo jumbo nonsense that you're going to go to hell for wearing shorts. Like, bro, go preach the gospel, bro. If you really care about the soul so much, why don't you just preach the gospel? That's why I'm very selective who I preach with because there's other people who are telling me that I'm prophesying, which um, it's not the same, preaching and prophesying. Um, people have told me they need to take up my hat when they preach because I'm sinning. But no, bro, you could go to church on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. You could have church in your house if you want. But do it biblically. Like the Acts 2. In Acts 2, you know, they used to congregate in houses. There's people that say that you're gonna, that you're in sin or you're an apostate if you go to a church building. I mean, there should be records of people in the Bible going to church. Like Jesus. Jesus preached in the synagogue. Jesus preached in the synagogue, um, brothers and sisters. Was Jesus sinning? No. Jesus never sinned. So yes, there's a lot of debates if Christians should keep the Sabbath. And how should a Christian keep the Sabbath? I'm going to make teachings about the Sabbath later. I need to get more deeper. I need to ask the Lord for a revelation. I don't want to like give you guys... And if you have questions about the Sabbath, I will take you to Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4 and Galatians. If you want to know more about the Sabbath, Colossians. Um, the Old Testament, yeah. You can also go to the Old Testament. And another thing I'm going to cover up is should a Christian tithe. You know, I might do that teaching too, you know. Because there's... Debates about typing and not typing. Some people say that the typing is done away with. Some people say it's not. That Christians must still do it again. The other Christians are saying, you know, that the dietary laws are still for us. And I mean, if you, I'm only gonna tell you something. If you feel convicted about something, like if you're a woman, if the Lord convicted you for not wearing pants, for wearing pants, then you should take heed. Just yes, make sure you don't tell other women that they're on their way to help or wearing jewelry and makeup. I mean, if you ask me what's my opinion on makeup, nothing wrong. I mean, if you're a married woman, you want to attract your husband, go for it. But I don't think you need to exaggerate, like, putting makeup like this. And then this. Like, calm down. Calm down, sis. I get it. You look beautiful. You're the way God made you. You know, you don't have to, like, exaggerate. Like, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that, sister. You know, you don't have to, like, over-exaggerate. Looking like a clown. I mean, I'm not saying that. It's a, Again, I'm not condemning you. I don't really make teachings about makeup and women wearing pants because I'm not a female. I'm a male. But... I just think it's very, like, absurd and insane to actually think. Like, for example, I'm going to give you guys my testimony about prayer. There are times that I pray, like, five minutes, ten minutes a, a day. I pray five minutes in, in the morning before I wake up. I mean, when I wake up. 
Sometimes when I'm dozing, I'm like, oh, Lord, thank you, Father, for another day. Thank you. I've been guilty of that. I say, amen. But let me tell you something. Even my five-minute prayer is powerful. My five-minute prayer is powerful. I'm not trying to boast about it, but if you believe that God doesn't answer prayers, even if you pray for five minutes, you're definitely wrong, brother and sister. You need to change that mindset. You need to change that mindset, you know, um, because, you know, Jesus rebuked the Pharisees for, not for preaching long hours. If you want to preach an hour, if you want to pray for an hour, that's fine. But you cannot be doing it to be seen by man, you know. I believe uh, private prayer is more important than, well, private prayer and also corporate prayer. Like at, at my local church, um, I don't always pray on my knees. There's times I sit down and I pray or I pray in silent. I don't go around and say, Lord, um, unless I'm dead. Because also, you know, I also got to make sure am I doing it because I want to impress God or because um, I want everybody else to see me. No, pray as how God wants you to pray. And leave other people alone. You want to pray on your knees, pray on your knees. You want to bow down, bow down. You want to sit, you want to walk and pray. Like for example, when I when I learn how to drive, brothers and sisters, one of the things I'm planning to do is praying while you drive. But I'm not gonna do this. Obviously, if I if I pray with my eyes closed, and I might end up hitting a car. You see, like, the irony? You could pray while you drive. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't know if you do it. But, yeah, I mean, Christians debate over everything about tithing. I will keep about going to church on Sundays or Saturdays. Shit, Christians um, celebrate Easter and Christmas. If you ask me, I don't celebrate those things. If you do, that's fine. But I believe you should, like, take it to God in prayer. Ask the Lord if he wants you to continue celebrating Christmas. Or not. I mean, that's between you and God. You know, Christians and uh, I, uh, there's others that say, oh, you're not baptized in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You need to do it again. Like, what? But, you know, I don't feel any, I don't feel the need to do it again. If you ask me, I've been baptized in Jesus. If you someone ask me, have you been baptized in Jesus' name, Mr. Lobos? My answer is yes. Why? Because Jesus is the Son, remember? So what's the problem with saying Father, Son, Holy Spirit when someone gets baptized in the waters? What's the problem? I thought you say that Jesus is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So what's the problem with saying Father, Son, Holy Spirit? Jesus said, you know. And then you see another crazy group of lunatics who are saying that Peter contradicted Jesus. Like, what the... This is why many of you guys should sit down, repent, and humble yourselves. There's some of you guys who are teaching that James and Paul are different gospels. Some of you some of you are even saying that Paul is preaching a different gospel than Jesus. Like I was like, oh my goodness. Like shake my head like bro, sit down, calm down. And um, let me tell you something that I disagree with some Hispanic churches or other churches in general. I don't want to say Hispanic. I don't want to be racist. Um, They play Hillsong during worship. Hillsong is full of apostates. But I'm very careful how to approach brother. If the Lord lets me to expose Hillsong or Elevation, I mean... I used to listen, any now and then sometimes I listen to Ele- Elevation. Like, I like some of their songs, but I heard like their group is wicked. You know, I don't know. So yes, I mean, I don't know when the debates are going to be over. The debates are going to be over when Jesus comes back. But let me give you one point. Yes, the person wasn't baptized in Jesus' name. But you know what Jesus is going to say? Here. Matthew chapter 7. I read I read this in the past and I'm gonna read it again. Um not everyone that's who says to me, Lord, Lord what, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my father in heaven. Many will say to me that they Lord Lord, have we not prophesied your name, cast out demons in your name in your name, we have done many for wonderful works, and I will declare to them, I never knew you, depart from me, you worker of lawlessness. 
It's crazy, guys. Imagine you tell Jesus on Judgment Day, Lord, Lord, I got baptized in your name. I, I, I gave my typing in your name, Lord. I kept the Sabbath in your name, Lord. Um, I defended the Trinity in your name, Lord. I defended once I always saved, Lord. I debated those who work salvation heretics, Lord, in your name. And if your condition is secure, you're going to go before Jesus with a, with a prideful heart. You're going to be like, Lord, Lord, I defended the, the, the doctrine of conditional security. Um, I exposed these wicked, once I always say people. I I exposed preacher rapture. And then Jesus will say to you, I never knew you. That's terrible, brothers and sisters. Like, where's the love? You know, the Lord has rebuked me for calling, um, once I always say people, children of the devil. Um, I must stop doing that, you know, because a brother, you know, I'm not going to mention his name. He sent me a text message that there's people who believe in Calvinism, the Lord works on them or something like that, that he sees the power of the Lord in them. Yes, they're ever in doctrine, but they're loving Jesus. They're keeping Jesus' commandments. They're living a holy life. Remember, the first shall be the last, the last shall be first in heaven. You're going to see a lot of people you don't even expect. And doctrine does matter. I'm not saying that doctrine doesn't matter at all. Yes, it does. You know, I was talking to a brother. Like, I, I talked to like a few. Not all one and one side. Always speak, people hate me. <laughs> not all of them do. The others, they're like, oh, Brother Brian, you're, you're a Trinitarian, right? Oh, I still love you. Okay. Amen. It's good that you still love me, even though I believe in the Trinity. Even though you believe in one and I believe in the Trinity. Okay. Even though you believe in Calvinism and I don't. Okay. You know. And I do appreciate the love, you know. I do appreciate the love. But yeah, it's, um, you could sit down all day, like me, exposing one thing don't we say, but I took a break from it because I believe the Lord wants me to focus more on my walk. I don't want to be draining myself because, um, again, as a brother or sister, I'm not going to agree with you in everything, but I want you to know that you still, I still love you. I'm not going to agree with you in everything or neither I'm going to compromise with you, no. I'm going to stand firm for what I believe in. If there needs to be a rebuke, I'll rebuke you. If there's need a sharp rebuke or love, I'll give you love. You know, uh, what's I going to say? There's other preachers who, who judge other preachers like we're filming. Like I've been told that me and Brother Alex brag about ourselves. When we're preaching the gospel, they take Matthew 6 out of context and say, do not let your arms be for men, but that's giving. I personally don't think... I see two sides. Okay. If you record yourself while you're preaching the gospel to the sinners, if you do it to edify others and to encourage other saints to do it, praise the Lord. And not only that, sinners watch. Like, for example, I'm going to be going to Santa Monica Pier one of these days. I'm going to be preaching to like 3,000 sinners at once. I'm going to be preaching to 2,000. I don't care how much. If it's 500 sinners, 10,000 sinners. If it's 15 sinners, 20 sinners. I'm still going to go to Santa Monica Pier. Because that's where the Lord is leading me. I'm going to record. Why? Because when people go on YouTube, they press Santa Monica Pier. They might, and they're going to see my preaching. And maybe one person might get saved. Through the Holy Spirit speaking through me when I preach the gospel at Santa Monica Pier. So, before, if you don't want to record yourself preaching, brothers and sisters, that's okay. Don't do it. You don't have to. If you want to do it, fine. But don't accuse other people of sinning for doing it. That's also not a salvation issue. As long as you preach the gospel, as long as you preach death, burial, resurrection, hellfire, um, eternal life, eternal damnation, you're fine. But if you if you if you preach if you if you record yourself preaching because you want more views, you want more subscribers, 
you want um then that's not good you know i'm a you know that's not good you know um of course you can preach in private because how you how 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 people are gonna hear you you pray in private and you preach in public the word for, the greek word from from preaching is caruso which means to lift up your voice Isaiah says, cry aloud, spread not lift up your voice like a trumpet, and show my people my transgressions in the house of Jacob their sins. You could prophesy in public, you could preach in public, but again, what is your intention? Your motive of your heart is that matters. But, yeah, I mean, I have all kinds of Christians, you know, people who believe I'm in sin for wearing shorts. There's people who think I'm in sin for filming my preachings with other brothers. They're, they're telling me that I'm bragging about myself. They're taking Matthew 6 out of context. I mean, obviously, like if, let's say, you know, I pray over someone. That's when I told the brother to delete it. Not to delete the preaching, but I asked the brother to cut it off if we're filming. Because there's other things that you don't need to see what we do. You don't need to see everything we do. The rest, well, me and Brother Alex or any other brothers who... Preach with me is between us and God. Now that we're hiding something from you, but because we want God to be glorified, not us. We don't want to be glorified. Like the time I was about to get assaulted in downtown, when somebody was about to assault me, I didn't, I didn't film it. Actually, I did, but the Lord led me to like, not to put it on Instagram. He told me that I don't need to. That if I want his praise, or do I want praise from men? And I'm like, yeah, you're right, Lord. I don't need to um, show, like, pity or compassion. I mean, of course, if it's something difficult, as let's say somebody throws me in jail for uh, violating, accusing me of something, then I, I'll, I'll ask for support. But until then, brothers and sisters, no one has laid a hand on me. I believe he's protecting me. But, yeah, um... Again, if you're a legalistic uh, Pharisee, if you believe that watching TV is a sin, okay, go go and kick rocks, bruh. If you think using Instagram and Facebook is a sin, well, stop watching my videos because YouTube is also made by sinners. If you think using an iPhone is a sin, then stop using it. Use a flip phone. Or, yeah, legalism is dangerous. So is liberalism. A woman wearing pants is not condemned to hell. I mean, unless she's like, um, and also not based on what they touch about modesty is that if you're a, a female, you could wear shorts, but make sure they're not too short. Like, don't dress up like a harlot, please. Don't dress up like a harlot. And man, st- Christian man, yeah, you stop sagging your pants. You don't have to sag your pants, bro. No one, nobody wants to see your stinky, dirty underwear. I'm serious. Nobody wants to see your stinky underwear. Don't be sagging, bro. So yes, modesty is important. Church rules are important. Fellowship is important. And again, if your local church wants to meet up on a Saturday, that's fine. And you want to rest on Sunday, that's also fine. I believe the first, the early church used to meet up on Sundays. I mean, I heard. But if someone has a Bible verse, please, please give it to me. But, you know, I might disable the comments, though, because I don't want people to be attacking each other on the comment section, so I might delete it. I don't know. I mean, if you have any questions, obviously you could comment if it's a serious question. But if you're going to be, like, fighting and telling me I'm in sin because I go to a a, a building made by men, I'm going to delete your comment, bro. I'm not, I'm not going to waste my time with you. If you think, you know, that, that I'm with the devil... You better ask God, ask the Lord, say, Lord, is Brian enough for you or he's not? The Bible said that by your fruits, you should know me. Jesus said by your fruits, you should know them. Not by their doctrine or not by their teachings. Well, yeah, that's also part of the fruit. Never mind, huh? I don't know what I'm talking about, but yeah. Yeah. You could pray, you know. Uh, walking, but again, I'm going to talk about prayer in a different video. Praying positions. God bless you. I hope this video has edified you. In Jesus' name, remember, on Judgment Day, there's going to be a lot of surprises. You know what's funny? 
I told my brother, what if Katy Perry goes to heaven? And the brother was looking at me like, what? I'm going to tell you why. I don't know if she is or not. I hope she does. I hope LeBron James goes to heaven. I hope old Daddy Janky, well, um, Jenny, Jennifer Lopez, you know, second period we said that he doesn't want nobody to perish, including the celebrities. Who day in and day out, they, they make fun of God. God doesn't want them to go to hell. Look, 1324 says, Strike to enter into the narrow gate. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able to. When once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock on the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open for us. And he will answer and say to you, I do not know you where you're from. Then you will begin to say, We ate and drank in your presence, and you thought in our street. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know you where you are from. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There should be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets of the kingdom of heaven, and you yourself thrust out, they will come from the east and from the west, and from the north and the south, and sit down in the kingdom of God. And indeed, there are last that will be first, and the first that will be last. Like, again... Your your brother who exposes to who's a trinitarian who exposes one end, your your brother like me you know, I'm not saying I'm going to hell. Imagine, you're gonna be like where's where's this brother such and such? He used to expose conditional, eternal security on YouTube. What, what happened to him? What happened to the brother? Like the people, you, you don't expect. You know, they're going to be in heaven. You know, the sinners that you preach to in the streets, you know, you tell them you were, they're going to go to hell. Obviously, they're on their way there. Imagine you see them in heaven. Because you don't know what God's going to do. So let's be very careful with our words. Be uh, wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Like Matthew ten sixteen says. Jesus said those words. And I'm, I mean, I've been guilty how I treat sinners in the past and I had to repent I had to know the hard way the Lord's been dealing with me for a long time if the Lord Jesus Christ wants to he could strike me dead right now but it's he's merciful to do that he's merciful that he does me so much again uh, God bless you brother and sister I hope this video has edified you um, in Jesus name I love you all Shalom